वो मिल गया ये तो वेलकम टू अनदर व्लॉग आई एम राइडिंग दिस दिस इज द रॉयल एनफील्ड हंटर 350 आई नो योर आईज आर गोइंग ऑन दिस एयरक्राफ्ट व्हिच इज लैंडिंग एट द मोमेंट बिकॉज़ आई एम स्टैंडिंग राइट नेक्स्ट टू द एयरपोर्ट हियर इन थाईलैंड स्ट्रेट अवे लेट्स कम टू द हंटर दिस इज एक्चुअली द मेट्रो वेरिएंट इज आल्सो अ रेट्रो वेरिएंट दिस इज द की ऑफ दिस मोटरसाइकिल एंड द रीजन आई हैव द की इन माय हैंड इज सिंपल बिकॉज़ दिस पैनल एक्चुअली ओपन नाउ व्हाई डज दिस ओपन बिकॉज़ इट हैज गॉट इलेक्ट्रिकल इनसाइड एंड वंस आई ओपन इट आई कैन नॉट क्लोज इट विद वन हैंड दैट इज फॉर श्योर देयर आई हैव रिमूव्ड इट and there you see the electricals we we'll try to fit it back into place which is going to be a bit of an issue with one hand so we just going to leave it as it is for the moment yeah doesn't look like i've tinkered with it okay coming to the front of this motorcycle there is the royal enfield badging on the inside all halogen lights yeah everything is halogen here headlight test high beam low beam pass by high beam low beam down shift obviously get led indicators but we'll talk about the accessories and options later there are six colors on offer and the only thing which changes is the tank yeah that's right everything else remains the same the mudguard remains the same and every other panel remains the same in terms of the colors now the thing is the retro variant actually has smaller wheels so this is a 110 section tire at the front 110 70 17 the retro variant actually has a 100 section this is a 300 mm disc brake it has got dual channel abs 41 mm telescopic forks of course and at the rear you get 140 70 17s and a 270 mm disc dual channel abs on this particular motorcycle the retro variant gets single channel abs and a 153 mm drum and a 120 section tire at the rear this is the only royal enfield motorcycle which gets 17 inch wheels because the classic gets a 19 at the front and an 18 at the rear the meteor actually gets a 19 at the front and a 17 at the rear This is based on the J platform it is identical the engine the powertrain the chassis very much similar to the meteor and the classic on which this is based on but some tweaks have been done because the wheelbase is shorter this is 1370 mm the classic has a wheelbase of 1390 mm and the meteor has a wheelbase of 1400 mm so yes this is 20 mm shorter wheelbase when compared to the classic and 30 mm shorter when compared to the meteor there is another plane which is landing we are going to have so much fun today Now coming back to this motorcycle in terms of brakes also it's similar the only thing is that the meteor does not get drums at the rear unlike the classic so similar brake setup as the classic single channel as well as dual channel abs options from the side it kind of looks like the triumph tree twin yes a lot of design inspiration there you see color to the tank is quite nice and the tank capacity is identical to the classic which means that this is a 13 liter tank now here you can see the engine it actually looks like a j yeah that's the reason probably they call it the j platform here is the code ji349349 is the cc cubic capacity this sticker also changes depending on the color of course and here you get twin shocks at the rear with six step adjustability for the preload okay see the attention to detail it says royal enfield here on the pegs the pegs here are center set on the classic they are front set on the meteor they are next bike set because they are so far ahead it's like on the other motorcycle just kidding but they are really far ahead okay it says royal enfield here so nice uh, detailing spoke wheels are there on the retro variant which looks quite cool there's a reflector here of course I love the way that Royal Enfield has improved its quality dramatically. Now this is a twin down tube spine frame or something of that sort. So you can see the frame as well and that is where the horn is. Okay, I don't know why this thing is just hanging like this. Okay, maybe it should be connected somewhere. Doesn't get the heel and toe shifter which is there in the Meteor. You get a main stand, you also get a side stand and if the side stand is engaged, the bike will turn off if you put it in gear that is. Okay, pillion pegs also. Nice attention to detail there. Says Royal Enfield here, seat height happens to be 800 mm. Okay, the classic has a seat height of 805 mm. The Meteor has a seat height of 765 mm. So the Meteor seat height is 35 mm shorter, but you can reduce the classic seat height by 35 mm by opting for the optional seat, bringing it to 770 mm. So lower seat height, ground clearance happens to be 150 mm. Sorry, 150.5 mm. I don't know why that 0.5 is there, but still, it is there. The bike's quality and appeal is very nice. Now the retro variant actually gets a single piece grab rail. This one gets split aluminium grab rail. and says royal enfield here 
Now, this is an LED brake light. The retro variant gets a bulb here. This is the only LED on this motorcycle. And look at it. Okay, something is landing again. There it is. <laughs> I don't know if the focus is on bikes or on Royal Enfield today. But you know what? Most of the Royal Enfield motorcycles' names actually come from aircrafts, fighter jets. But not for this bike, the Hunter 350. Anyways, here you can see overall quality. It's a very much like an interceptor. This does not come in the hand. Okay, yeah, that is quite nice. Okay, full tank of fuel. Yay, it's a good day today. So let's just shut this hand. Here we are. The thing is, I am going to turn on the bike. There it does a full swipe up. This is an analog digital cluster. This tripper navigation is actually part of optional kit. Cost around rupees 10,000 and it gives you turn by turn navigation. You need to have the Royal Enfield app, but it really drains the battery of your phone when you use it. This otherwise tells you the time. This also tells you the time, so it's 12.51 right now. There's a fuel meter right there, which you can see. There's an odometer. There are twin trip meters. Yeah, they are the twin trip meters. And then I can just reset it by pressing a button. Yeah, and that button happens to be right here. It says I. This is where actually the pass by switch should be there, but the pass by switch is actually placed here, which is a bit of an inconvenience. This is to go into high beam. Okay, it has this retro control. So to turn on the bike, very easy here. There it turns on with a lot of smoothness somehow. Okay, there's a USB charging socket here. So yeah, that's thoughtful. I'll just show it to you from below so you can see that. Are yaar, full nira. It's a bit hard to operate. Yeah, there it is. USB charging socket is also a nice thing. Now, this cluster also has a service reminder. It also has a trip F, which basically tells you how much you have ridden the bike after it's got into reserve. But that's something which KTM has been doing since they launched the bikes in India, which is more than 10 years back. You've got telltale lights right there as well. And uh, you know what? It shows you eco meter, gear position indicator. When I rev it, well, there's no tachometer, so nothing much to see there. But you can hear the sound of the bike. 7000 RPM is the red line of this motorcycle. But it looks quite appealing and I'm happy that they've concealed all the wiring bits quite nicely as well. Now you can see the light when it's turned on. We shall get into high beam. Yeah, that is the high beam. This is the low beam. And let's see the brake lights as well. So there it is. Yeah, you can't really see it unless and until I apply brakes, of course. So as I see it, this is a very appealing motorcycle which shares all its parts with the Classic and the Meteor. Only some tweaks have been done. So you know what, they've actually reduced the wheelbase by bringing the front tire closer. Yeah, at the front is where the wheelbase has been shortened, but the handlebar position is slightly ahead for a slight lean in riding position. Let's do one thing, let's rev it again. Okay, listen to it. In fact, it says Royal Enfield here as well on the wire and the alloy wheel design is similar to the Meteor, this U-shaped alloy wheel finishing. Quite nice, huh? honestly. And they have used uh, sort of zip ties with Royal Enfield branding there as well. Okay, let's do one thing. Let's start riding this motorcycle. But before that, let's see another plane land. Yeah, there it is going. Look at this. Okay, it shows that helmet. That is the time when you can pair. It says built with Google because yeah, it uses Google Maps, of course. By the way, I have not shown you the switch gear here. So this is the engine kill. This is to turn on the engine. It also gets hazard light. The horn. Yeah, it is loud enough. These are the indicators. And the mirrors are quite functional. So you can see the indicators functioning at the moment because I've turned on the hazard lights. And here we go at the rear. Let's start riding right away. All right, we're all set to go, which means turning on the motorcycle and here a little bit of vibration you can feel on the mirror right now. Yeah, that's there. Into first gear, revving the motor, rev all the way and off we go. Very confident now huh, this motorcycle is and you won't believe it. I've timed myself so well today that here we get a green signal. I don't trust anybody. <laughs> Anyone comes from anywhere and... Okay, let's see what speed it does. Full throttle right now. We've crossed. Okay, we've touched 100. We'll do the top speed right now. Come on, let's go! Fourth gear. It is almost reaching 120 into fifth. Yeah, it's showing 120. Yeah, that's about it. That is the top speed. But Royal Enfield claims 
that the top speed of this motorcycle is 114 kilometers per hour yeah that is all and feels claim not mine braking performance is fine but you know what front brakes are not that great and that's the reason you have to actually use engine braking quite a bit to stop brakes are sure-footed though but yeah that front end is not that confidence inspiring so here we are going to go again full throttle so this is a 349 cc engine which is a single cylinder engine which is air cooled but also gets an internal oil circuit on the cylinder head for oil cooling a bit of oil cooling that is so air and oil cooled engine and it is actually fuel injected of course it has to be it gets a counter balancer as well so hc motor very refined and smooth for a royal enfield motorcycle it is a long stroke of course but it's not as long a stroke as a uce engine so slightly shorter stroke here but still a long stroke motor for that traditional royal enfield characteristics now it doesn't get a tachometer but red line actually comes at 7000 rpm and yeah there's not much in the top end as such more so you know because by the time you reach there you're like oh god i'm starting to vibrate right now so is there a u-turn spot probably there is so we shall try and take a u-turn i like the way the gearbox is so slick shifting it's a five speed uh, gearbox very confidence inspiring gearbox and you never hit a false neutral ever that's so good as well now, never do you hit a false neutral in fact when you want to get a neutral you really get it right all the time so here we are going to come to a halt yeah i <laughs> could have got a slipper clutch because you could hear it right now and hazard lights on this master cylinder is also nice the positioning of the rear master cylinder is also in clear sight so you know when the oil is actually less here hazard lights off revving the motor and off we go now clutchless shifts do not happen here the clutch is uh, a little bit snappy i would say feels a bit heavy as well and on and off throttle transition is not the best because it feels a little jerky so they've actually revised a couple of things like the ignition and the fueling so a little bit more fuel being sprayed inside in the combustion to just improve the combustion in the engine actually to improve the combustion result is that it is marginally more peppy and has a crispier throttle response compared to the meteor and the classic in fact 0 to 100 kilometers per hour takes around 16 seconds and it's 0.2 seconds faster as well 20.2 horsepower and there we have a red signal oh no 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 it's saying seven seconds to go so here we go 20.2 horsepower at 6100 rpm and 27 newton meters at 4000 rpm that is the output from this engine and we are having a race with that plane come on let's go yeah this road is completely empty and then you can stand and ride as well because of the center set pegs of course overall riding comfort is fine only thing is because the handlebar is far ahead you have to stretch a bit i have kanun ke hath i don't have to stretch a bit as much but then you know what either thoda bahut problem ho jata hai near the tank of course and uh, abs works fine in fact we are going to hit a red right now yeah orange already okay so we have to stop you have to really use engine braking here because that's the way there is confidence under braking otherwise the front really does not support you as much as you would expect yeah vibes can be felt in the top end huh? not much so in the mid range the countdown has started into first gear let's see what it does in each gear first gear 50 second gear 78 or something third gear it will do 100 fourth it will do 110 i believe yeah slightly under 100 in third shifting to fourth and then you know now top speed in fifth well it has a five speed gearbox could have had a six speed for better cruising but the sweet spot here has to be 80 kilometers per hour beyond 80 kilometers per hour it struggles it really struggles beyond 80 kilometers per hour so you know it's best to ride it between 70 to 90 kilometers per hour and that's the ideal cruising range because the engine also feels aram say at you know at ease otherwise engine feels stress you pull it beyond that so I like the way the engine is smooth and all but for this kind of a motorcycle now nah, it could have done with more power yeah. more performance would never hurt anybody actually Royal Enfield was planning to bump up the capacity of this engine to around a 370 380cc but then they realized you know price will go for a toss so then they decided against it but if they had done it now nah, trust me that would have been awesome I think this is sort of a dead end so I'm just going to make a quick turn here yeah and just see how easy it is to ride this motorcycle in fact the dynamics are so good now that okay look at the turning rate it's fantastic that i never have to even put my foot down when i'm coming to a halt when you you know you reach one kilometers per hour you can still keep your both the legs up 
not have to put them down unlike other motorcycles which feel heavy this is based on the classic and the meteor more on the meteor of course that's the reason the cluster is also the same only thing is the meteor has chrome here and blue dies this has white dies or something of that sort so that is the real reason why you know uh, this bike is more meteor oriented than classic and trust me it is lighter at 181 kgs it is lower the ground clearance it is more compact shorter wheelbase and all these things help it to go like this absolute confidence around the corners feels really nice but it is not a motorcycle for knee down riding because on the track it feels a bit uneasy because of the corner clearance is not that great my foot is touching here on the ground because obviously it scrapes the foot pegs even though all in feel is like humne pegs ki position thodi upar karke rakhi hai it will still scrape the pegs and then when it does it now then you kind of lose the balance of the bike and look at the level of stability it's that stable this bike because of the wider tires 17 inch wheels really help it a lot so a lot of these things have actually made this motorcycle so much better in terms of dynamics and that is the real reason why someone would want to buy it because traditional royal enfield loyalists will close their eyes and get the classic okay meteor is for those who are looking for going touring this is a bike which is sort of a scrambler appeal a roadster sort of which really feels quite different to ride in a lot of ways because it feels so much more sharper so much more agile so much more fun in so many ways i really like it i like the way this bike is so much fun okay left is free so we should just put an indicator for left and go left yep off we go ride is on the stiffer side so although the suspension travel and the suspension everything is the same as the classic and the meteor the suspension does feel on the stiffer side and i think that's also to do with the smaller wheel size at 17 inches which also gives it a lot more agility so bike is super duper agile it's really very nice to ride but it could do with more performance yeah. a little bit lacking in terms of outright grunt and uh, yeah this one deserves a bigger engine or more power of course because that would do justice to the chassis the chassis is fantastic the engine is also good but not for this application for the classic it's fantabulous but for the hunter 350 not really because this is more like an interceptor 350 here okay there's a lot of wind blast obviously at high speeds which you would expect from a bike of this kind considering that uh, there is no wind screen but you can get one as an option and that stiffness you can feel because you know over bad bumps it does transmit a lot to you as well and that's something you have to contend with unfortunately so this is a motorcycle which is more oriented towards ride than comfort because if you want comfort you'll opt for the other royal enfield motorcycles but they are also on the stiffer side but yeah have more compliant ride for sure without a doubt now the tank happens to be 13 liters in the meteor you get a 15 liter tank classic also is 13 liters and the fuel efficiency is claimed to be 36.2 kilometers per liter i am riding in fifth right now which is an overdrive gear i have to downshift to fourth to actually opt for the top speed yeah that's another bit of an issue yeah so basically in the real world you will get somewhere between 35 to 37 38 kilometers per liter out on the highway you can stretch that to almost 40 42 kilometers per liter so that's also decent fuel efficiency considering the size of this engine and torque is the name of the game so low end is okay mid range is really nice top end is completely lacking and unless and until i don't do this the bike is not going to progress any further yeah the lighter weight and everything really works well to make this very nimble and agile a motorcycle and royal enfield is obviously targeting new riders with this bike and they have done a great job in that regard because this is a very easy motorcycle to ride it's surprisingly easy surprisingly agile and surprisingly very effortless somehow and that's really the beauty of this bike i've completely opened it up into fourth gear now we will try fifth i have to really go down like this to actually gather more pace but that's about it now thing is earlier we did 120 now it's not doing 120 because some bits of issue here and there between the motorcycles i was riding dhanel's bike yesterday and that had a slightly different clutch feel and also different headlight throw the headlight throw was a little lower this one has a higher headlight throw here i can keep these speeds all day long because this bike is very comfortable at these speeds okay 80 90 100 no problem oh beyond that yeah is a problem oh, because it doesn't really reach there so i would say high speed stability is also fantastic i have no clue which road i have reached but it looks like the german autobahn right now because i can just keep the throttle open all the moment and just keep going on and on and on and on and around sweepers now the level of confidence this bike offers is fantastic like you can just go like this I didn't even have to leave the throttle because I know even with all that weight 
it doesn't feel that way and the steering geometry has been revised to make it more sharper and all that really works to make this a motorcycle which doesn't really feel like it's sharing its underpinnings and other cycle parts with the classic and the meteor which kind of feel very lethargic and heavy and hefty and ponderous no this bike does not feel that at all and i think i have left for some other city only right now because i see no sight of a u turn at all never mind downshift Oh, quite a lot of fun, huh? There was actually a U-turn from below, but I missed that because I was just so busy looking at this beautiful bridge at the moment. Okay, let's do one thing. Since I'm stuck here, let me show you genuine motorcycle accessories offered with the Hunter 350. So there are actually 23 of these in two packages. This is the urban theme. This is the suburban theme. Okay, you can see what all is there. But I'll show it to you on the motorcycles right away. LED indicators at the front. You get a tinted visor as well. You get a sum guard. This is finished in black right here. An engine guard, which is smaller when compared to the one on the other motorcycle, which is obviously the suburban theme. Here you get a tail tidy and LED indicators and a custom seat as well, which is kind of different. That's about it. Those are the changes in terms of the theme. Now we let's go to this one. Here you get a bigger crash guard you get a silver sum guard and you get a backrest for the passenger with this black mount for the same that's not it because it also gets pannier right here and the mirrors they also are different in fact this one gets bar end mirrors and back to the vlog manager u-turn here we are into first gear having the motor and off we go Oh my goodness! Oh my moly! Look at that plane taking off! I never expected to get such a fantastic shot. Bye! Wear your seat belt. Don't jump out of the emergency exit. Whoa! ये तो बहुत सही जगह यहाँ पे आके फोटोस लेने पड़ेंगे मुझे. Anyways, this motorcycle rivals the Honda CB350 RS, which has a better engine because it's cleaner in terms of the way it drives and also feels faster dynamics are also quite good with the honda of course and honda was known for making engines so obviously the engine is fantastic there the price of this bike is expected to be somewhere around two lakhs on road mumbai which is quite value for money i would say considering you know it is a royal enfield which will be towards the affordable side as the classic is priced between two point 2 lakhs to 2.6 lakhs, 2.25 lakhs to 2.6 lakhs for the classic 350 and the Meteor comes between 2.42 lakhs to 2.6 lakhs. The top end models of both the bikes are similar in terms of rising but Meteor obviously does not get the single channel APS version. So guys this is my vlog of the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 Metro version variant whatever you want to call it. It's fantastic, it's fun only I wish it had more power and performance that would be really awesome and now i'm on the auto one and my goodness another flight is taking off I, i'm just gonna stop here and admire the aircraft if you like this vlog but then what do you want to do what do you want please i'm going to take a bike for you stop it oh i just realized i'm facing the sun you guys won't see anything bye